Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be using railroad ties and landscaping. So I'll show you guys how to install these. This works great for gravel driveways or walkways or garden beds. So stick around and I'll show you how to do this. Alright, so the first step is prepping the area where the railroad tie is going to go. You need to have a nice level flat surface for the railroad tie to sit down so that it doesn't wobble around. It sits perfectly flat. And we've already done that. We just built last week our raised garden beds right here. So if you guys are interested in those, go check out that video. I'll leave the link at the end of this one. Now these railroad ties are really heavy, they're, that's what makes them nice for edging, they're not going to move, go anywhere, but these things can be around 200 pounds, maybe a little over, a little under, but you want to keep that in mind when you're planning a project like this. Now also you'll want to take a look at these railroad ties, make sure that you're looking at which sides are good and face those up, and that's what you're going to see once it's all done. These are already used, so they're going to have nail holes from where the railroad tracks were mounted to them. It might be a little rotted out or split on one side. So you're going to want to look for the other sides, which side looks best, and face that outwards. Now the best way to cut these that I have is to use a chainsaw. If you have a large circular saw to cut through this, it might take two swipes. You could also use that, but the chainsaw cuts through this really well. Now as you lay this down, no matter how well you level out the area, you may still need to level out a little bit better. So I'm going to actually scrape this off, make sure it's nice and level again, and there are a couple high spots now that I see I'm going to shave that down. Now I also have a little piece of wood hanging out from where the race beds are, and I'm just going to chisel away a chunk of this railroad tie so that this can set right on top and I don't have to cut that other piece of wood. Now with this one again, it wobbles a little bit. There are a few high spots still, so I'm just gonna mark the outside so I know where to put this back. And I'm gonna shave off all of those high spots and make sure that this sets down very level and it doesn't wobble around at all. Now I'm quickly gonna cut the other two pieces of railroad ties and put them in place, get everything set, and then I'm actually gonna come back and put pins into the ground from all of these railroad ties, locking them into place. Now the nice thing about this is even if you bump into this with a mower or something, it's not gonna move, it's not going anywhere, it's gonna be really solid, and you won't even have to touch this once it's done. This can sit here for years and not go anywhere, it's gonna last, and you're not gonna have to have constant maintenance like other edging that you have. This will easily keep the weeds and the grass out of your garden or out of your gravel and keep the gravel from moving into the yard as well. So it's a really good solution that lasts for a long time and it looks really nice too. Now once you get all the railroad ties set, I'm going to go around and level this out and backfill any sections where I need to dig out around the railroad tie and make sure that everything's smoothed out ready to move on to the next step. Now another benefit to these railroad ties, it seems like it makes a great balancing beam for kids. Jem is having a lot of fun playing on these while we're working. Now I'm going to start putting some pins into these railroad ties, locking them into place and holding them together as well as holding them down to the ground. So on these corner pieces, I'm just going to run the drill bit at a diagonal in through the other one as well, locking the two together and then hammering it down a couple feet into the ground as well. So this really holds nicely. Now all the other sections at every end of the railroad tie, I'm going to put a pin about three feet, so it'll go into the railroad tie all the way and then probably two and a half feet down into the ground. 
this seems to be enough where I'm at. If you have different areas where it's softer soil or sand, you might wanna go a little bit deeper. Now, in case you're wondering, I used half inch rebar for these stakes and just used an angle grinder and cut those into three foot sections. You could also use a sawzall or a hacksaw to cut those as well. Now, for the drill bit, I used a half inch drill bit. Something to keep in mind, these railroad ties will destroy drill bits, just completely wear them out. So if you have an old one, go ahead and use that instead of a brand new one. Now next I'm going to be taking some plastic and laying this out where we're going to be spreading gravel. This does a really good job at keeping weeds from growing up and it keeps the dirt and gravel separate making it stay nicer for longer. Now for the gravel we're going to be using crushed slate. This works really well. There's no sand. It's already been sifted so that this will not grow weeds very well at all. You'd have to pour some dirt in here in order for any weeds to grow. So it should stay nice for a really long time. And a really good tip for anyone looking to buy gravel, if you have a truck, a pickup truck or anything that can haul gravel, it's so much cheaper to buy this stuff at a garden center by the scoop instead of buying it by the bags at like Home Depot or Lowe's. So if you do have a truck and have a place that you can buy a scoop of gravel, you can save a ton of money instead of buying the individual small bags at Lowe's or Home Depot. Now one small bucket load in the back of my truck filled up this whole section around three inches of gravel throughout the whole area. So it goes a long ways. You probably only need about inch and a half to two inches of gravel, but we had a little bit extra so we filled it up to three. Hey guys, if this video has been helpful at all, thank me by hitting that like button down below. It helps me out so much. So thanks guys for hitting that and keep on watching. I'll show you guys what this looks like when we get all finished. Now, just like with most projects, there's always a mess afterwards that you need to clean up. And if there are any sections of dirt that are exposed that you had to level out or dig up, just get some grass seed and you can easily cover this up. I'm gonna quickly sprinkle over some grass seed over this. Next, I'm gonna spread hay lightly over the whole area. This protects the seeds, keeps them in place. Make sure that wind doesn't blow it away or water washes it away. Birds won't eat it, and it also keeps the moisture locked into the soil so that those seeds don't dry out. Now, I'm also gonna be watering this at least once a day, just completely soaking the area, making sure every seed has gotten wet and the soil is nice and damp. Now we did have a huge section where we needed to seed right here, so there's a lot of dirt to cover up, but that's because our old garden beds were here and we've torn those out and built brand new raised garden beds. So it looks a lot better, it's more condensed, same amount of growing space, but a lot smaller area that it takes up. So I'm gonna fill this in with hay and I'll show you guys in a couple weeks what this looks like. It takes a while for grass seed to grow, but once it takes off, it will fill in the area pretty well. So after two weeks, I'll show you that in a second. Now after you plant all the seeds, put the hay on, you're gonna wanna go over the whole area, make sure everything is nice and wet. Those seeds are gonna start soaking into the soil and already start to germinate a little bit. It's gonna take at least a week, week and a half to start seeing any signs of those seeds growing, but you wanna make sure they don't dry out and stay dry for too long or else your grass is not gonna grow well. Now I'm also gonna rinse off these railroad ties and all the gravel, there's a lot of dust on this gravel from being moved and shipped around in dump trucks and it just washes that down and makes it look really nice once you get all that blue powdery sand off of the gravel and it just kind of soaks down below the surface. Now you can see here guys, this is about a week and a half, almost two weeks after we've planted the grass and it's 
starting to pop up. This is still very delicate. You do not want to walk on this grass. You'll kill it. You want to stay off of it. Keep watering it every day. This is already coming in really thick and hopefully within a couple more weeks or a month that grass will be completely full and you won't be able to see any dirt after. Now here's a couple shots of what the garden looked like when it's all done. We're super happy with this and really excited about this next growing season. This really has dressed up our yard a lot. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you did, hit that like button down below and help me out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I can't wait to hear from you guys down in the comment section. Now if you're wanting to check out more of my videos, go check out that raised garden bed video. It's pretty awesome. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.